Yeah, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Have your way. Holy Spirit, have your way. Yes, let your word go forth, Father. Let your word go forth. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hmm. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Hmm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hmm. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, have your way, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Mm. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. Hi there. Um, I hope all is well. I am uh, just being obedient and um, really I just want to kind of talk about some things that have been um, really strongly in my spirit today and I know that the Holy Spirit is asking me to share and just kind of, you know, have a chat more, more like, um, share my experiences or, um, yeah, I always call it trial and error, trial and error, <laughs> um, <laughs> which is so true. It just is. It's, um, trial and error, you know, partnering with the Holy Spirit to learn and grow and become more of what I already am, right? And so it is my passion that others would grow into all that they already are and I believe that by me sharing um, you know just vulnerably at times or you know what you know I'm hearing the Holy Spirit say or <sighs> that it is going to help someone else to be more in tune with who they really are and one of the things that I believe has really been on the father's heart for some time now and really eternally right is this whole idea of unity and what does that look like and um, for myself he's taken me through many different seasons many different times and what I have realized this year, really this year, is that, um, oh, Jesus, oh, Jesus, Jesus, hallelujah, is that unity is maybe not necessarily what I thought it was, maybe not necessarily what... 
um, we've been taught. Maybe the whole point is that there is always more to learn and wow I just feel like almost the father's heart of grief on the whole subject of division in the body and yeah have your way Holy Spirit have your way Holy Spirit you know we have this idea that we must tell people their error we must tell people um, where they're wrong we must um, point out where someone is being misled and what I have learned is that the Holy Spirit is the truth the revealer of all truth. And the Holy Spirit will reveal something to someone or to yourself when you can handle it. You know, <clears throat> Jesus said in, I believe it might be, yeah. So John 16 and 12, I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. However, when he, the spirit of truth has come, he will guide you into all truth for he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak and he will tell you things to come. He will glorify me for he will take of what is mine and declare it to you. Now there's a few keys here. First of all, this was God in the flesh. He had all of this information. He had all of this, um, um, the whole, ah, hallelujah, what's the word? The whole universe. He had all the knowledge for everything was created by him, through him, and for him, right? He had all the knowledge. He had, he had all the wisdom. He had all these nuggets. I mean, if anybody had some nuggets, it was him. And he said, look, there's a lot I want to tell you right now. But you can't handle it right now. However, when I send the spirit of truth, when the Father sends the spirit of truth in my name, once I have been glorified, then he'll lead you and guide you into all truth. Here's another key that we could not possibly receive everything all at once. And if we did, we would literally explode. We would explode. It would be too much. You ever had those seasons where, <laughs> I'm laughing because I've had a couple, where you, li or even those times where you're literally just so, uh, the revelation is flowing from heaven at such a rate that it's like, I don't know how much more I can take. This is a lot right now. Oh my Lord. Wow. Wow. And you ever notice somebody in that state? They, they kind of seem crazy or they kind of seem like, what's wrong with them? Well, the, you know, the veil has been torn. Hallelujah. Something has shifted in their perception, right? And I believe that there are many veils that must be torn as we go on in the process of continuously gaining this heavenly knowledge, you know, this heavenly uh, information. And the thing of it is that we're all in different places and spaces and you know, the Holy Spirit is so kind because he will give you the space you need in the place of revelation you're at. He will not give you what he knows you can't handle. He's going to show you uh, the truth that you're capable of, of going and growing with at this time. He's so kind. He's so gentle. He's so meek. He's so, ah, he's so wonderful. 
Ah, oh, you're so wonderful. Oh, Holy Spirit, you're so wonderful, yes. Show us the person of Jesus, which is the image and the very witness of the Father. Oh, that we would know your true nature and character of goodness and kindness and love above all things. Love, you are love. <sighs> Hallelujah. So, it's very easy and in all honesty, we all get caught up. We all have these times where we get caught up in what is going on in the world. And even more, I don't care who you are, I don't care, you know, what you believe or don't believe, this, what we see is a matrix. It is a, yes, Lord, thank you, Father, hallelujah. Matter. Let's talk scientifically because science is beginning to back up the, the knowledge of heavenly things. Quantum physics. Okay. Let's talk about matter. Matter is, is the physical aspect like, okay, you know, this is matter, a physical object, right? But what science has proven is that this and everything we see is a 99.9999% spiritual things. In other words, it is 0.1% or 0.0001% physical. But we have gotten so caught up because this is what we see. This is where we live you know many people we worship the stuff we have right i mean this is just like uh the deception the lust of the flesh the lust of the eyes the pride of life to say well once you have this then you're gonna be happy you're gonna be fulfilled and even more in the terms of the church and the way that we have operated has been with our five senses. And look, we've done no good with this because we have, unlike God, unlike our creator, we have called out all the behaviors that we see. And we have put our fingers on all these um, things that we see. I'm going to go to Matthew 6. You know, it's crazy because I did not want to come on here. I don't know why. Probably because I was supposed to. Holy is the Lamb. Okay, so Matthew 6. I'm going to start at 21 because I think it's very interesting. And I don't know why I never noticed this before. But Matthew 6, 21. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. That was interesting to me when I was looking at this earlier. I'm like, really? Because the next verse is where I'm going. The lamp of the body is the eye. Not eyes. Eye. If therefore your eye is good, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eye is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in you is darkness, how great is that darkness? The lamp of the body is the eye. If therefore your eye is good, your whole body will be full of light. Wow, I feel that in my body. Hallelujah. So what is Jesus saying? Because this is red letters, right? This is red letters. What is he saying? 
well. I believe he's speaking about a single point of view. Not with our five senses, but with our... Yeah, it's like the vision of the Father, the vision of heaven. What is... Um, what is really being said here? What is what is the 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 thoughts for this person or this situation or this thing that the creator has? Because we have all kinds of our own thoughts and we all do. But there is a higher place. There's a higher place, a place that the mind of God reigns. Sometimes it's so hard to put into words. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. But the mind of God sees restoration. The mind of God sees uh, uh, the purity of of. To the pure, all things are pure. If there was a pure uh, person or thing, it would be the creator, right? So the mind of God is outside of time. The mind of God is infinite. The mind of God is focused on restoration, is focused on things above. The mind of God is not changing according to our behavior, Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And so this is, you know, I just have been really sitting with this. I knew hours ago that he was going to ask me, well, that he did ask me to go live. And I've just been sitting with this and just, you know, to be honest, these reflections come through error, through a place where he, he I call it like I descend, <laughs> This is what, look, I'm just being me. I descend to gain some knowledge to ascend and to, to help others, right? So I've been having a really hard time with how we constantly are pointing the finger at what we think is wrong and, you know, and it just wasn't sitting with me. I mean, we, everything, we got to call out all the false stuff. We, you know, we, we basically believe scripture to be, um, telling us to expose the darkness, you know? And so we've got to call it out. And the truth of the matter is it's the light within us when we have a single eye that is going to expose the darkness without us having to speak, without us having to even um, um, acknowledge that, you know, oh, this is this. Do we ever stop to think that maybe in all of our, let's just use political, uh, the, this is such a time, right? So let's just use, let's just say you're against one of the candidates and you begin to speak against this candidate and you begin to really, you know, um, just point all the things out. You know, let's just say uh, you are against Israel. I'm just using examples. And you begin to point out all these negative things. Let's just say you're against the government and you begin to point out all these negative things. Do we ever think that maybe we are giving these structures, these people, these powers uh, more of a presence, more of a, a continual spiritual effect? Because look, it is not the things that are seen that are merit worthy when it comes to the kingdom of heaven, it is the things that are unseen. Do we ever stop to think that instead of pointing out where we see error or where we see wrongdoing, that we could just embody heaven, that we could embody the good, that we could embody um, our purpose, 
our calling because in quantum physics, there is the ability for two different structures to be there simultaneously. In the old science, in the lower science, no, it had to be one or the other, okay? But now we have an elevated awareness and knowledge, and we can see that in quantum physics, two things exist at the same time, and it's okay. But the one that we give more attention to, the one that we prepare for, the one that we are fixing our eyes upon, and I'm speaking of heaven, are we fixing our eyes upon heavenly things? Have we set our mind on things above? Because at this place, then when I'm feeling like, oh my gosh, I'm going to be real. Oh my Lord, I, I, I just, it just bothers me when we're always just pointing the finger. Well, let me let me see what is it in me that needs to change because to the pure all things are pure let's read the scripture it's in Titus 1 1 Titus 15 to the pure all things are pure but to those who are defiled and unbelieving nothing is pure but even their mind and conscience are defiled. And what I began to sit with today, and this is me speaking personally like, okay, Father, I need you to help me to transcend this. I need you to take me higher in this because I want to bring heaven everywhere I go. And if I'm looking around at this world and this matrix, then I'm going to be distracted. Then my field of heaven is going to shrink and decrease. I'm not going to be effective in building the new thing, which is heaven on earth, right? He began to show me how we as a church have pointed the finger and we've said, nope, that's wrong. Oh, that's a sin. Oh, no, that's a false teaching. Oh, no, that. Oh, no, that. And it's because there's somewhere within us that is still operating in a place of fear and shame. So I'm afraid that I'm not going to please the father or I'm, I'm ashamed of not being good enough or I, because here's the thing, whatever we see is a direct reflection of our own heart. Now, if I look around and I see the beautiful things and I see, well, there's a direct reflection of my own heart. So anytime I'm not in that space, I need to ask myself, what is it within me that needs to shift and shake and change? It's not about this outside place because again, there, these two structures are simultaneously there, but the one that I want to focus on, the one that I want to build is heaven. I want to focus on the blueprint from heaven. I want to focus on what it is that the father is downloading in my spirit to begin to speak life into, to begin to build. Because look, our consciousness is a key. What we are conscious of becomes a, a real thing. It becomes reality. Do, do we not think that our thoughts become words? And even more, do we not realize that there was a reason that Jesus Christ could read thoughts? It was because he could feel that thing. You ever be around somebody and you know they're thinking negative about you? You can feel it. And, and, and there's power in our thoughts alone. We know that there's power of life and death in our tongue. But there is actual power in our thoughts. We have power to change the very frequency of heaven or hell around us. I'm going to go, I'm at Hebrews 11. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. I'm going to say it again. I'm going to keep going, but I'm going to say this again. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Yeah, I hear the Holy Spirit saying to go to 2 Corinthians 4 and 18. While we do not look at the things which are seen, 
but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. And so he's literally asking us to look above to focus on heaven, to focus on his face, his throne where we are seated and to see those things that are unseen, to pull them into reality, to pull them into becoming real. Now I'm going to go back to Hebrews 11. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it, the elders obtained a good testimony. By faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. It's a very deep and profound thing. But the world that we frame is going to be framed by our thoughts and our words. Hallelujah. Kimberly Fuller. We rule and reign and take our dominion there. I know if I notice a comment, it's on purpose. And this is the whole thing, you know, and it's like the Lord was even speaking to me about the number 18 because today's the 18th. There's no big deal, right? I mean, that's not always, always going to speak. No, but then he began to point it out when I was uh, working out and then he began to um, um, show me how even this there's 18 days until the election and how 18 can represent abundant life. Okay. Or bondage. And I'm just like, wow, like literally we have the choice how we are going to see everything. And as we begin to truly come into who we are, the knowledge of the father's heart, the knowledge of um, life. The knowledge of life and life in abundance and we will know the truth and the truth will set us free and I'm gonna go there to John I believe it's John 7 because I spoke about we'll know the truth and it will set you free but I want to speak about this 7 and 37 John 7 37 on the last day that great day of the feast Jesus stood and cried out saying if anyone thirst let him come to me and drink he who believes in me as the scripture has said out of his heart out of his heart out of his heart will flow rivers of living water and so I constantly me I use me as an example I have to ask myself Angela what is flowing out of your heart what is that what is flowing out of my heart is that heaven is that the holy spirit is that rivers of living water or is there something else and if there is something else i need to look within and ask the creator to help me to see as he does to believe as he does to recognize the authority that he has given us. It is no different than his own authority. It's as if he's ruling and reigning through us because he is. But we don't like to see this. We would rather stay dumbed down and point the finger, my God, Jesus, at everybody else. And there's no real power there. There's no real fruit there. There's no real place of transformation, growth, and change that you are going to see, not just within yourself, but as you begin to transmute this negative energy, give it to the Father and let Him give it back as light. It changes everything around us. And now I'm able. I'm able to go and I'm able to establish kingdom the kingdom of heaven wherever I am and instead of me seeing with natural eyes I'm seeing with the single eye you know I call it like the the eye of the spirit it's like spiritual eyes I mean Jesus said it in red letters he said he who has eyes to see and ears to hear let him understand 
It's like this, this eye that sees as the father sees. It's not by sight. We walk by faith and not by sight. I mean, we read these scriptures, but it's such a, an important thing to put them together correctly. And I believe it starts with seeing the father, how he sees me. Seeing his love for what it is. Seeing his, his justice as, as the true redemptive act that it is. He's never destructive. It's not his nature. And we have this idea that we have got to destroy this old thing. We've got to destroy these fleshly ways. We've got to destroy what doesn't, you know, line up with the word of God. In all truth, we need to establish what's coming from heaven. What is being said to us? What is being shown to us? What is it that heaven, you know, is, is speaking? What is the father saying? But, but we get so caught up with the news and, you know, um, all of these distractions. And it's easy to do. I, I don't want to shame anybody. I want to help you. I, I want to help. I want to help everyone. Because unity is necessary. It's a very big key for righteousness to reign and rule in the earth. See, we think Jesus has to come back for us to receive that. <clears throat> and here's the thing. We can learn from everybody. And this is something that he's really helping me with right now. Because I've been the type, oh, one wrong thing I hear, I'm turning you off. Oh, you don't line up with my beliefs. Oh, I'm turning you off. And the truth of the matter is that we can learn from anybody. We can learn from everybody. There is something beautiful that can be taught to us if we would just step back. Allow each soul, whether they're in front of us or on a screen, to be themselves and to see the beauty that they possess, to see the wondrous, you know, soul that they are, to see the gold within them, to listen because there's gems that, that can be learned even with those that don't agree with us. So I'm going to go to John 16 and 7. And these are red letters. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. And when he has come, he will convict the world of sin and of righteousness, and of judgment, of sin because they do not believe in me, of righteousness because I go to my Father and you see me no more, of judgment because the ruler of this world is judged. And so he's given us this responsibility you know, to surrender our very vessel, our mind, our will, our emotions, our hearts to him that he could take over. The Holy Spirit could just take over and rule and reign. And then righteousness comes forth through our very vessel. I just hear him saying to go back. So I'm going to go back to Matthew 6 and 22. The lamp of the body is the eye. If therefore your eye is good, your whole body will be full of light. And this is the light that comes into the world and the darkness cannot comprehend it. This is why it's a peculiar way. John 1 and 4, in him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. 
Now look, I'm going to go down to 10. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, and the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own did not receive him. But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God, to those who believe in his name, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. And this is what he says about you and, and every human being. He's hoping that they will receive him, that they have the right to become children of God, that the word can become flesh and dwell among us. That righteousness would rule and reign through the light that we carry and possess as we allow him to heal our land. As we allow him to heal our mind. As we allow him to rule and reign within us and, and take those, those dark places, right? Because every good and perfect gift comes from the father of lights and in him there is no variation, right? We don't want variation. We don't want this, this double-minded eating from the knowledge of the tree of good and evil a little bit here, but then eating from the tree of life here. No, we are destined to become a tree of life. That what we think becomes fruit. That what we say becomes fruit that the others would eat. And look, these are deep things. You don't have to believe me. But take it to your Father. Take it to the Holy Spirit. We've got to come up higher. Anybody can look around and see the natural. Any, anybody can be a news anchor and report what's going on in the natural. Anybody can say, yeah, this person has fallen. This is going on and this is going on. But we have to be able to come up higher and say what heaven sees and say what heaven is showing us and say what the Holy Spirit is saying. And it's a place of real intimacy. And it may not be the way that is normal right now but it is going to become normal more and more there is an awakening through a shaking through a series of events that has been foreordained before the foundation of the world and you know there's no stopping it you see back when hallelujah yes lord <laughs> wow Back when they would, like Jesus, they hung him, right? He didn't agree. He was blasphemy. He was, you know, whatever. Uh, Marie Antoinette. I mean, there's so many martyrs, right? Now there's too many heretics, so to speak. Too many that don't agree with the status quo for, for them to kill them all off. And so the awakening continues, the awakening goes on, the awakening rises up. And as you awaken to your true nature, Christ within you, then it brings room for a ripple effect for a grand awakening for those around you. Because we, okay, if all things are made through him, for him, and by him. And in him all things exist. And he is the hope of glory, Christ within us. Then all things are within us. We have this capability to take what, observe a dark thing. Take it in, sit with it, and let a light be released in that place. When we give energy to the dark thing and begin to speak on it, then we are uh, allowing it to continue, allowing it to have more power. We need to understand and come up higher. And the things that I'm speaking of are only spiritually discerned. To a carnal man, this is foolishness. It doesn't make any sense. 
But there is a people awakening. And look, to be awakened, to be uh, uh, receiving these deeper things from, from the Holy Spirit, you're going to have to humble yourself. You're going to have to say, you know what? I don't know everything. Okay, my doctrine doesn't have to be set for the rest of my life. In fact, I believe that's a snare. And I'm just going to be honest. I believe that we should be transforming, growing, changing, learning more, discerning who the Father really is, discerning, you know, who the, the Trinity basically really is at a greater and greater and greater. We should never be like, okay, this is it. I have a problem with that. Me personally, I'm never going to do that. You're never going to hear me say, this is what I believe and this is it. This is how I used to be. It used to be that way. This is what I believe and this is it. You have to be in a position of great humility and be broken before the Lord and say, wow, Lord, I'm sorry. I've been deceived because here's the reality. We've all been deceived. Every human being in the earth. And if you're in the world, you've been deceived by religion as well. I don't care if you don't believe. You've still been deceived by religion. You've been deceived by the matrix. You've been deceived by the veils, the many veils. Well, I'm here to prophesy and tell you that there are veils that are accelerated. There are veils being torn at an accelerated rate in this time in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I'm literally like shaking on the inside. And I don't know about you, but I receive it. I receive it. Tear the veils, Father. Tear, tear the veils. Hallelujah. I want to know you more. I want to be more effective to bring heaven to earth. Oh, how we need heaven. Oh, how we need the love and the light the joy and the peace and the hope and the goodness and the kindness and the meekness and the righteousness that righteousness reigns. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah, I know this word is penetrating hearts. I praise the Father. I thank you, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. My God, Jesus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm at 2 Corinthians 4, and I encourage you to meditate on all of it. I'm not going to read it all, even though I'm tempted to, <laughs> but I'm not. I'm not going to read it all, okay? So I'm going to start at 4 and 3, but even if our gospel is veiled... It is veiled to those who are perishing, whose minds the God of this age has blinded, who do not believe, lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on them. For we do not preach ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your bondservants for Jesus' sake. For it is the God who commanded light, to shine out of darkness, who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. We are hard pressed on every side, yet not crushed. We are perplexed but not in despair, persecuted, but not forsaken, struck down, but not destroyed, always carrying about in the body, the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our body. And I'm going to stop there. There is a fire on this right now. Oh, Father, I thank you for tearing the veils that have, that have kept your creation from seeing more and more and more of your truth. I thank you. Hallelujah. I sense and know that there is a shift in the earth and a shift in the belief systems of the multitudes. And look, if you're in a place where you consider yourself a pioneer, then... Stay, 
stay there. One thing that I've learned as a forerunner or somebody who, you know, is considered radical or um, out of the box or whatever it is, is that there are going to be times that it the Lord will take you to a place of revelation and you'll release it and it doesn't make sense to anybody. But then as time goes on, it begins to make sense. And, and we can never really get comfortable in the place of acceptance. Because the truth is that it doesn't matter. We can honor everyone. We can love everyone. I'm not saying to be disrespectful. That's foolishness. It, it's the exact opposite. It's that love would be shed abroad and poured out around us. The knowledge of heaven, the fragrance of Christ poured out around us. Yeah, hallelujah. I just sense that's that's it. And um once again I'm very you know, if there's one thing I could say, it's just be obedient to the Holy Spirit. You know, sometimes in your obedience to the Holy Spirit, you're going to upset people. And we have to find a place to still love them. And not necessarily avoid these certain things, but see them and come up higher. To pull them up higher. We have dominion and authority and much more power than we realize. But... Look, the Father isn't going to give you this knowledge and these abilities when you're prideful and you're attempting with your words to kill other people or to cause negative judgment or negativity in any way. We speak life. And first we have to see from a place of life in abundance. I think it's a process that we continuously go through and grow through. I don't, I don't know that we ever fully arrive. And that's the beauty of staying close to our creator and staying low, staying humble. So I just encourage you to be you. Be you in Christ. Love, love, love. Love those that don't understand. Love those that, you know, reject you or even talk about you and thank you Holy Spirit I want to say one more thing if I am talking to someone else and attempting to speak to them about another person in a negative light, let's just say I observe something and I proceed to tell somebody else, well, this is what they did. Maybe they did something to me, right? This is where discord is sown. This is one way to quickly diminish a move of God, to quickly um, um, diminish unity. We've got to be in a place where no matter what we're seeing in the natural, that we can call forth the supernatural, that we can call forth the gold. Because if I'm fixing my face to go and say something about something or someone to somebody else, the problem is me. I am the issue. I am the problem at that point. This is where we see the cords and the webs of discord and uh, uh, broken relationships. And this is a key thing that these dark spirits like to do, to sow discord. Well, did you see what she did to me? Did you hear what he said to me? No. We have got to be in a position to see that betrayal, to see that negativity and say, you know what, Father, help me to love them anyway. Help me to be the light of Christ to them. Because in our broken places there, where we feel like we've got to complain, darkness 
is manifesting. Darkness is being poured out of us. Death. And we've got to come up higher as a people. It's one thing for the world to operate this way. It's another thing for the church to operate this way. It's manipulation. I should never want somebody else to think negative about somebody because I have a negative thought. The problem is me and my negativity. See, we don't really want to take all that responsibility, but that's where our authority and power is. I love you guys. Be blessed. Be encouraged. There's always more. And if there's something within me that is negative, right? My father still loves me the same. He's not looking at me with those eyes that I'm seeing through. And I can come to him and all he sees with is love. Pure, holy, righteous love. And I can say, help me, help me. Cause I want to see like you do. I want to be like you are because it's your goodness that will draw people to want to know you and, and change and transform into what they already are. Because that's the truth. We're all made in his image. So there's no shame. There's no condemnation in Christ. And from that place in my heart, I can be that for you and everyone else. And if I don't have it here, I can't give it. I'm going to give you shame. And I'm going to point my finger. I'm going to tell you all about your sin. We need to be righteousness consciousness. Righteous consciousness. Anybody can point out what's obvious. This is where we're headed. The old mind frame is being torn down because the veils are being torn in this hour. Hallelujah. Ah. Hallelujah. <laughs> I feel that so strong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Praise the Lord. Because you know what? He saw me in a big pile of a mess and all kinds of negative behaviors. And he loved on me and he poured out and he poured out and he gently reached his hand out to take me up, to pull me up, to bring me out. It's who he is. He doesn't change. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And that love is life-changing, transformative, and it's our only real power. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. <laughs>